you know, there's a thing called DMT, which is the spirit molecule. They say it's released into the brain and, uh, you know, when you pat, when you die. Right. And there's a lot of ways you could tap into, you know, your own DMT. Uh, you can do 5-MeO DMT, which is like this toad thing that Mike Tyson has made very popular in his podcast. But you got to like really go to like, you know, some really fly place in order to get that or know a guy or know a guy. Right. Um, so that seemed really sketchy. And then you could actually make your own DMT and smoke it. And I don't know, man, the videos I've seen look too much like crack to me. I, I just can't. Right. So I was like, yo, what is the most natural way that you could really, truly do this in a way that has, a, you know, thousands of years of proof behind it? And, and it's been proven. And that's like to do the actual tea. So I did my research and sometimes the universe brings people to you at a time where you need them. And a homie that I work with knew a person that was doing a retreat. So I signed up for the retreat and because of COVID, the retreat got canceled. But then when they ramped it back up and put it back on again, cause I already had paid, I was kind of already grandfathered in to the scenario. So he was like, hey, if you want to come to this one, we're going to be up in Georgia. And boom, we pulled up. So, you know, you go to the uh, ayahuasca ceremony. They got a shaman there because it is a it's all it's a it's a religious event. It's a holy thing. And it's not like people just getting high and tripping out in the woods. It's a real serious thing. And if you don't go with your intentions right and with the right motives, your experience may not be great. And I haven't had, I haven't talked to too many people that haven't had great experiences, but I know it can be a bad experience if you don't follow the dietary plan, if you go under the influence of other drugs and see if you don't have your intentions set right. So I went and I had a phenomenal, phenomenal experience, which I, you know, I talk about deeply in depth on my podcast at Crack After Hours to the point where like I had to give each day its own hour to talk about it because it's a really deep thing. And uh, everybody's experience is different. And I, I get a kick out of it, learning about all right, what happened to you on your retreat. And it's one of those things where you know when it's time for you to go. I knew I was juggling a lot. I knew I had to deal with the energies of a lot of different people just on a daily basis, even before I got my own show. And it's just, it could chip away at your soul and who you are after a while when you kind of kind of keep the world in balance all the time and still try to find time for yourself. So I felt like I needed that. And it helped me, uh, you know, find closure with some things I was holding on to, like the deaths of my mother and my grandmother and um, and some other things. So it really, really, really uh, gave me a peace of mind because I know how it feels when people die now. And I'm not afraid of death anymore because I know the feeling of death is the most beautiful thing you'll ever experience. Disclaimer, not saying go kill yourself, but it, it the death is a beautiful feeling. So if you anybody out there is listening to this or watching this, if you have grief over losing somebody, don't i mean yeah you're gonna miss them because they're no longer here but just know they're good and we're the ones suffering real talk i've never had a bad edibles experience because i would eat edibles for the trip out you know like hey where will this eventually lead us on today like i remember the very first time i had edibles i programmed director at the station we worked with at the time whose name will stay will keep his name out of this he gave us some edibles while we on the air and then just all of a sudden, just out of the blue, I just start busting out laughing on the air, right? And then we had like an hour and a half left of the show. So my partner, uh, Kino Super K, they held me down for the rest of the show. Then we end up going to a party. And uh, Kino at this time lived across the street from me. But you had to get buzzed into his building. So I'm like sitting outside talking to somebody. All of a sudden, I feel like I'm in New York. And like, and then I start talking to somebody who's trying to get in the building. And then Kino comes outside. He's like, yo, who are you talking to? I was like, yo, you didn't see that person standing right there? Like, yo, like they was trying to, you know, they was trying to bring their groceries into place. But anyway, so lost track of time. But the real kicker, the illest, the illest edible story I got. So one time, because I'm a big foodie, okay? So one time I went to Fogo de Chow and it was a dinner date. And I'm like, yo, Fogo tastes great, just regular. But imagine how Fogo the child would taste if I had an edible before I went to have it. So this is back when they weren't really labeling the edibles really good. And I ate like a whole piece of chocolate because if you bought a chocolate bar, you would eat the whole thing like normally. Right. So, yo, smash that chocolate bar. boom. So I get to Fogo sitting down. And all of a sudden, I feel like my feet are like 
sticking to the floor. Like the floor is like hot lava and it's melting the bottom of my shoes. And as I'm trying to lift my feet, I can't get my feet to like really lift good because it's just sticky and pulling me down. And then I start looking around the restaurant. Oh, uh, footnote here. Anytime I'm really high, I think I'm in New York, no matter where I am. Like, I'll think I'm in New York. I could be in Miami and like, yo, we in Brooklyn right now. Like, it just, it's just weird. Everything morphs and turns into New York. It's crazy. So anyway, I am convinced at this point that I am in the World Trade Center and it is September 12th, 1999 or 2000, whatever year it was with the, uh, with, with the World Trade Center bombing. I think that was uh, 2000. So it is September 12th. I pick up the phone and call my homie Kino. It's like, bro. I don't know how we did it, but we stopped 9-11. I'm eating in the World Trade Center right now. But the problem was I was afraid to get up and walk away because everybody had knives. So I just felt like I was going to have to like, you know, like, like stab and, you know, cut my way out of there. Like I'm th looking around, like trying to like look for things to weaponize. Like, yo, if I break this plate in half, this would be like kind of like a little a double sided saber. And I can use this steak knife and just, you know, like if anybody give me any static, I could just cut my way out of there. So I, I, I sat down enough. I, like I sat and ate enough food because I never turned my card over. If anybody ever been a Fogo, when you turn the card over to green, they keep bringing you food. When you turn it to red, they stop. Never turned it over to red. So they just so I just ate and ate and ate until like I went into a food coma and then like I was politely lifted up and like you know taken to a, a Uber where like I ended up going home. But I really thought that those people were gonna kill me that night, and I thought somehow I did some like time travel trickery and stopped nine eleven from happening. Don't even know that part. I just know whatever it was that it was September twelfth and we stopped it. But apparently we did because that had happened. But is that really a bad? thing you know to like have different emotions to things that you wouldn't typically have under the normal circumstances i was having a conversation uh with my manager earlier like i was telling her like yo i'm now listening to all these albums that people have been listening to the whole time high and i'm i'm now hearing these things with just a completely different set of is like oh shit the chronic is amazing when you're high or like you know there's even YouTube channels dedicated to like people who are hot. Like there's literally a channel called Watch While Hot. And whoever puts these videos together knows exactly what the hell they're doing. Because like they it, it'll just pull you into this vortex where you're just chilling, just watching random stuff and laughing about it for hours. And the visuals and the sonics and the hypnotics of it all is just amazing. So I hate that I waited so late in life to like really start dabbling, but I'm also not mad at it either because maybe I would have been less productive if I like got into it way early because results may vary. Some people like, you know, will smoke mad weed and then go like find a cure for something. Some people will smoke weed and then they need a cure for something. You know what I mean? So you never know what it's going to be to you there. So, you know, I try to stick to the rivers and lakes that I'm used to and just, you know, balance it out. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. But uh, the ayahuasca experience trumps everything that I've ever experienced ever.